lead-based paint hazard remediation and abatement. The NRTC team gets the lead out in more ways than one. I'm Susan Catlett, an NRTC program manager. This information will assist eligible applicants with the NRTC LBPH grant application for state fiscal year 2024. This RFP is open to nonprofit organizations with approved NRTC neighborhood plans. Get the Let Out is more than just a feeble attempt at wordplay humor. It describes our mindset in launching this RFP and in developing the application and review process, which will move quickly. This presentation will cover the technical assistance we're offering in addition to this video, RFP funding and eligible activities, the application content, which is detailed in the overview and guidelines document, a word about that document. The advanced copy we sent out has been updated. Be sure you're using the version updated on February 9th, 2024. We'll review the rating criteria, the timeline, and the available resources. After you've viewed this presentation, you may have questions. The NRTC team will answer them live during our drop-in technical assistance session on Tuesday, February 20th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And as always, additional help is just an email away by contacting us at nrtc at dca.nj.gov. The NRTC LBPH RFP is funded by 25 million American Rescue Plan dollars. Up to 1 million of those dollars may be requested per application. There are income eligibility requirements attached to these funds. All residences in NRTC neighborhoods are considered to have met them. Funds may be used for the remediation and abatement of residential lead-based paint hazards in NRTC neighborhoods. And now, some details about how the funds may be used. The housing types targeted in this RFP are one to four family units constructed before 1978. The maximum allowable per unit cost for remediation of lead-based paint hazards is $20,000 but, and I call your attention to the fine print there in the corner, the average per unit cost of all units remediated under the grant cannot exceed $13,000. We will be doing a bit of math with this RFP. The abatement of lead-based paint hazards, which would only be done if elevated blood lead levels were found in a child under the age of six or in a pregnant woman, the maximum per unit cost is a flat $25,000. These activities must be completed by September 30th, 2026 and expensed by December 31st, 2026. Activities will fall under one of two program components, housing and other. Physical unit costs will fall under the housing program component. The corresponding budget will comprise 65% of the funding request. Some might refer to these as hard costs. Program operating costs include admin expenses and will comprise the remaining 35% under the other program component. All expenses for the physical work done in the units testing, contractors, and the like are physical unit costs. Two of those physical unit costs may need a little clarification. Expenses for the temporary relocation of unit residents when necessary to protect their health and safety during repairs are allowable. If the contractor performing the LBPH work determines moderate additional repairs are needed to protect the integrity of that work, those repairs are an allowable expense. Using the example in the overview and guidelines, if a unit slated for remediation had a roof leak that would compromise the planned LBPH work, the roof repair would be an allowable physical unit cost. Both types of expenses will be included in the per unit cost. 
everything else, staff implementing programs or managing a grant, office space and program supplies, consultant fees are program operating costs. Admin personnel costs are included here at a maximum of 10% of requested funds. This would cover salary and benefits for an executive and ancillary administrator, not necessarily directly involved in grant activities. As with the 2024 NRTC project RFP, application information will be entered directly into SAGE and into the project information workbook. For this RFP, both have been streamlined for all applicants, but especially for those who submitted 2024 project applications. In SAGE, you'll complete just those application pages seen on the slide. We will review each of those, but first, let's take a look at the NRTC LBPH Project Information Workbook, which will be downloaded from and uploaded to the attachments page in SAGE. The purple tab of the workbook houses the project description. The information entered here will determine the amount of your funding request. Simply enter the estimated number of units for remediation and the estimated number of units for abatement. Wendy's fancy spreadsheet will do the rest. By the rest, I mean the spreadsheet will calculate the maximum allowable costs for remediation using the maximum average per unit cost of $13,000 and the maximum allowable costs for abatement at the per unit maximum of $25,000. Program operating costs, which will amount to 35% of the funding request, will be calculated for you, as will the total. We'll take a deeper dive into program components and budget categories a little later in the presentation. Here, just the number of units for remediation and abatement were entered. Mathematically, the project description is done. The orange tab that may look red on your monitor is where you'll enter the number of residential buildings built before 1978 in each of three categories, single family homes, two to four family homes, and even though these grant funds cannot be used for them, larger residential buildings that house five or more families. The green tab is where information about residential lead-based paint exposures is entered, but only if it is available. Because this information may not be readily available or easily attainable for some applicants, it will not be scored. And that's that for the NRTC LBPH Project Information Workbook, which once completed will be uploaded to the attachments page in SAGE. Next, we'll take a look at the pages of the online application with NRTC Program Manager, Wendy Allard. Welcome to the NRTC LBPH application in SAGE. Application forms on the right side of your SAGE screen has three PDF documents for you to review. Application instructions, the overview and guidelines, and eligible expenses. All three documents have been updated for this RFP, so please take the time to review them. Grantees will begin the application with the project description. Although the instructions ask for a description of each proposed activity, you will actually follow the instructions in the workbook, which Susan referenced earlier. Simply add the number of housing units that you expect to undergo remediation and abatement to the spreadsheet, and then check this box once the task is complete. Organizational information and timeline are the next items on your list. Organizational information is only required if your agency information needs updating since the August 2023 project application was submitted. If agency information has changed, answer yes and fill out all the information. If not, answer no and move on to the timeline. The timeline is the same as prior applications and is required for all applicants.
Susan has already explained how to fill out the Neighborhood Housing Stock Spreadsheet in the workbook. On this page in SAGE, you will check the box that indicates that you have completed the Orange Neighborhood Housing Stock tab. Neighborhood lead-based paint exposure is not required. If you do have reported exposure and filled out the green spreadsheet, you can check this box. Otherwise, you can skip this section altogether. The attachments page is only slightly different from the 2024 project application. Applicants that did not complete a 2024 project application will need to submit one map with boundaries and legible street names. You will also upload the NRTC LBPH project information workbook and your insurance certificate to this page. There are some additional upload slots for any other documents that you would like to attach to your application. Since the funds attached to this grant are federal ARP funds, please make sure that you have visited SAM.gov to download your current registration information. Upload the PDF document from SAM.gov here. Follow the overview and guidelines to submit other information, such as partner information, Schedule A personnel, Schedule B consultants, and certificate sheets. Please note that the forms have changed slightly and resumes are no longer required. Now let's take a little time to go over the budget. There are only two components that you will use for the NRTC LBPH project grant. They are housing and other. You should have two separate housing components, one for the remediation activity and one for your abatement activity. Additionally, you will have one other category for all program operating costs. As you can see from the sample budget on the screen, there are numerous line items under each of these activities. When you drill down on remediation, for example, additional eligible expenses are listed. Please estimate as best you can based on the amounts that have been calculated in the project information workbook. You do not have to be exact. Additional categories can be added when expenses have been realized and amounts can be changed. Also, please note that when calculating operating costs, admin personnel, which can indicate executive level staff not directly related to the program, cannot be higher than 10% of total cost. All other program personnel are listed as a separate item. Total program operating costs, including both types of personnel, cannot exceed 35%. There are just two rating criteria for this application, with 25 possible points for each. The capacity to manage the activities and the need for lead-based paint hazard remediation and abatement in your neighborhood for a total of 50 possible points. The application score will be the average of the points awarded by each reviewer. Applications achieving the minimum average score of 30 points will be recommended for funding. And listed here are all the important dates for the NRTC LBPH RFP. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has established a certification for the renovation, repair, and painting involved in the remediation and abatement of lead-based paint hazards. On their website, you'll find a search feature for certified contractors and information about the certification for an individual and also for the entire firm. We advise all organizations to train at least one individual. There is a cost for the training and there are DCA funds available to pay for it, but not through NRTC. To access DCA funds for EPA RRP training, send an email to our colleague Leo, whose address is shown on the slide, and be sure to mention your request is related to the NRTC LBPH application. 
Thank you for your time and attention. The NRTC team looks forward to taking your questions live during our team's drop-in technical assistance session on Tuesday, February 20th.